Hello, this is Alex from cables.gl. I want to talk about a specific use case of creating um, an art generative tool or some sort of a composition that then you want your user or maybe even yourself to download in a higher resolution than your project on a website or even inside the editor. And the operator that we're going to use is called download texture. And it's uh, really simple to use. And what we're going to do is use this um, quick scene I set up here, which has some random splines all over the place, and they're getting some colors with a plasma that is uh, color mapped to some color palette. So let's just say you also have some awesome scene you've made. And uh, in this use case, we're not using post-processing. It's just all in-camera stuff. And uh, what we want now is to maybe have a button that will download this image, not in the size of this render, which is at the moment uh, 604 by 604 pixels, but maybe like 4096 or something, right? So how do we set this up? Let's pop open our search and look for download texture. So we place it down and let's take a look at what it has in its parameters. Pretty much nothing. It has a texture input. That's super important. Then it has this convenient download button. So if we're working inside of our editor, we can just use that button to uh, grab a frame from our renderer. And then we have a file name, and that will be used um, in the file name that you then download in your browser or in your mobile device or something like that. We can, of course, create some sort of a generator or maybe like a user entry for the file name, but I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you how to take this scene and not use the render size or the size we have this uh, a project appearing on a website or something, but a specific size that we'll set up um, for our texture. So you'll see that in the parameter panel, we don't have uh, any sort of entry for the resolution of the texture. Uh, that will come directly from the texture itself. So we can use, for example, um, something like texture info to study like a texture that's coming in. So right now we don't have any texture output at all, but we'll put in a render to texture and then it disappears from our um, render preview because now it's coming out of here only. So if we put in a vis to texture or vis texture, then we see our camera view. And if we plug in the texture info, we'll see that um, it's populated with the stuff from our render to texture operator. So right now it's taking the viewport size and this is our viewport here. So if we resize it to something else, the texture info will report this as well. So um, I'm just showing you that there is this pretty neat uh, in information operator for your texture size. And um, let's just backtrack a bit and set up what we were actually intending to do. So how do we do this um, different texture size then from our uh, viewport? What I like to do is to use another sequence operator here and then use one of these extra input ports because usually I'm using the sequence as kind of like a um, order of operations thing or maybe just a nice way to uh, space out my cables and things like that. But this time I'm going to use one of these extra input ports to trigger the scene below it into a new render te uh, to texture at a different resolution. And then that way it won't disappear from our viewport like we just saw and uh, the user or we can interact with our scene and set up a new composition and then trigger this um, special render to texture uh, that's going to render at the resolution we need. So then we need our render to texture again. And then I will trigger it. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I don't want to trigger all the time because I want my interaction to be super smooth. So if I put down my performance operator, I'll get this readout of my performance. Like I, I like 
how it uh, functions at uh, 60 frames a second. And uh, I want to keep it that way as much as possible. I don't want to overload the project and uh, use resources that aren't really necessary. Because what we're going to do is take a single frame of the composition. And so we just need to trigger this render to texture once to then send our texture to our download texture. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to put down yet another sequence up because I really like having control over my operations. And then I'm going to plug it into here and then plug in a second port out from the sequence into my download to texture. So right now my setup is kind of ready. We have a sequence that's waiting for some sort of a trigger and that's going to be a single trigger. Then it's going to trigger the render to texture to grab my scene and uh, create a texture. And then this texture will go into the download to te texture operator. And then the sequence operator will then toggle the operator and uh, we will download our screenshot. So what I'm going to do is maybe use a key press learn operator, which is super handy for us to use a PC keyboard or I guess even a mobile keyboard to trigger um, stuff below it when, when a specific key is pressed. So right now it's set to zero and what we need is to learn a key press. So I'm going to press learn and press S. So key code 83 is now ready to trigger my little setup here. All right, what we didn't do is set up our render to texture differently than uh, the rest of the scene, right? So right now the scene is rendering at the viewport size of 500 or actually uh, 676 by 591. So here it's um, also set up to that size. If we use our texture info, we'll see that. Oh, well, right now it's not uh, triggered, so there's actually no texture in there. So if we now press the letter S. Um, our render to texture was triggered, populated, and then it shut off. So we're still at 60 frames. And we have our, our screenshot that is 676 by 591. And this is what is reported by our texture info. So let's untoggle this viewport size, use viewport size from my render to texture, and set it up to something like 496 by or zero nine six. So this thing is now primed and ready to fire our scene at this uh, high res and then download the texture. So let's see if it works. S, it thinks a bit. And here is our awesome high res frame. So let's look at the file information. It's exactly as we set up in this render to texture. That is silently waiting for us to trigger it with a key press. And for example, if you want your user to quickly do this, we can do like a sidebar as well. Sidebar. Um, and then we'll remove our performance up. Since I'm done showing you that we were saving resources. And then we'll put in a button. and then plug it into our sequence setup here. So we set up our composition, maybe change some parameters. We can uh, also, you know, expose that to the, to the user or something. Uh, where is my offset? We can change some colors, um, change a palette or something. And then when we click the button, it does the exact same thing, and now gives us this 4K uh, picture of our composition. Now, one more thing that I wanted to show is what if, um, for example, in this case, we actually don't like how this looks and the background is kind of wrong, and we don't want to set up uh, another control for the user or us to pick a different uh, clear color or something. We want this composition that we have or you have uh, with a different project um, with a transparent background. So let's remove our clear color. And now we have this black background. And that's not exactly transparent, right? It's black. So if we click the button, 
Well, it is transparent, actually. Is it because I already set up my main loop? No, it's not. So that's excellent. So actually, we don't need to even bother with the main loop uh, to be transparent. But for example, if you do have like a background on your website that you want to be clear, you can untoggle in the main loop the clear and clear alpha, and then you can put it on the background of your website or something like that. But yeah, it's a, actually, I learned something. So if um, we have this main loop uh, set up by default and uh, we don't have a clear color, the render to texture is already not getting any information for the background color. So um, our background is transparent. So pretty neat. So you don't actually have to do the, the extra work there. So if we use vis to texture, the red color is telling us, hey, there's no pixel information there. All right, so that's that. And I learned something, you learned something. Um, I hope you will use this operator. It's super, super nice to use. Uh, and tell me how it goes. Bye.